The science of laser is strongly related to types of conventional lasers such as solid state laser with size about few 10 cm, helium neon gas laser with size about 30 cm, anti arc laser with size about 60 cm, CO2 gas laser with size about 100 cm and lasers for satellite communication with size around 100 meter. The semiconductor laser is constructed by many parts like gain media, cavity mirrors, optical pumping module, and encapsulation case. However, the actual size of laser pointer is less than 10 cm. But if we take a look inside the laser pointer, most of the part is filled with battery. More precisely, size of laser diode is 1 mm. It is hard to fabricate such powerful tool with the size of 1 mm. Nowadays, it's possible with the help of nanotechnology and advanced fabrication techniques. Most important part of laser is gain media. The gain media of laser is semiconductor material. Most common semiconductor materials used in laser are gallium arsenide indium phosphorus for red color, gallium phosphorus for green color, and gallium nitrogen for blue color. Let's try to understand the physics behind the semiconductor laser. A semiconductor homojunction diode lasers are solid state lasers based on semiconductor gain media, where optical gain is usually achieved by stimulated emission. It is usually fabricated by using P type semiconductor over it N type semiconductor. Then a depletion layer is formed which is a actual layer. The top and bottom faces have metal contacts to pass the current. The front and rear faces are polished to constitute the resonator. Laser light emission takes place at inner band transition under conditions of high carrier density in the conduction band. So as shown in this band diagram, the band diagram of heavily doped PN junction without bias is shown here, in which EV is energy level of valence band and EC is the energy level of conduction band. EF is Fermi energy level, whereas EG is energy gap between valence band and conduction band. When high doped P and N regions are joined, at the atomic level to form PN junction, the equilibrium is attained only when the equalization of Fermi energy level takes place as shown here. Now let's see the working mechanism of semiconductor lasers. When the junction is forward biased, electrons and holes are injected into the junction region in high concentrations as shown in figure A. In other words, charge carriers are pumped by the DC voltage source. When the diode current reaches a threshold value as shown in figure B, the carrier concentration is the junction region will rise to a very high value. As a result, the region small d contains a large concentration of electrons within the conduction band and simultaneously a large number of holes within the valence band. Thus the upper energy level in the narrow region are having a high electron population while the lower energy levels in the same region are vacant. Therefore, the condition of population inversion is attained in the narrow junction region this narrow zone in which population inversion occurs is called an inversion region or an active region. 
the recombination of electron and hole pairs lead to emission of spontaneous photon the spontaneous photons propagating in the junction plane stimulate the conduction electrons to jump into the vacant states of valence band this stimulated electron hole recombination produces coherent radiation for example gallium arsenide laser emits light at a wavelength of 9000 angstrom in infrared region this is all how the lasing action is happening in the semiconductor laser